Last topic of chapter four, and I really like this topic. I like to use these menu functions just because they're kind of entertaining to use. Um, so this function is going to be over what's called menu. And what menu does is it basically gives the user a way to kind of interact with the uh, code. Right? So the user has to actually go in and push a button on a menu of options. Okay? So when you use this menu function, what it does is it creates this little pop-up and it has several options that are displayed in button form and it looks just like this right here. Okay? And you get to customize the line up here where it says instructions and then you'll change the name on these buttons. Okay? And you can have more than three buttons or you can have less than three. So you get to pick the number of buttons. Okay, so it just allows the user uh, a different way of inputting data. This way you don't have to use the actual input where they have to type it in. Here they can just pick an option and then MATLAB takes that information and uses it. Okay, so now the thing you got to realize, when the user is using this and they hit one of these buttons, MATLAB doesn't return what's listed on the button. So the text that's on the button is irrelevant to MATLAB. It could care less what that button says. MATLAB sees a value returned when they hit a button. Okay, so if they were to hit the first button, MATLAB's going to get a 1 return to it. Okay, and if they hit the second button, a number 2 will be returned. So, so on and so forth. So it goes from top down, and the number that's returned from the menu is just basically the number of the button if you count from the top to the bottom. And that's a something that a lot of students forget about and they don't think about it when they're writing their code and then they can't figure out why they can't get the menu to work right but that's why because it returns a value not what is listed on the button okay so once you get this so once you get your option in then usually you're going to use if else if or switch case to select between the different paths right now, obviously, you don't want to use the menu function if you want to have an automated code because somebody has to be there to actually hit the button. Okay, so let's go over the setup here on how we create this in our code. So first, I'm just going to call this choice. This is just going to be a variable name. You can call this whatever variable you want. So if they were picking a... Let's go back to color because that's easy. If they were picking a color option, you could call it color. Okay, So that's just a variable name that you want to pick. Then it's going to have the equal sign. And then we have the menu. All right, So that's our function. And then the input arguments of this function menu are going to be strings. All right, So the first string here, this is going to be the string that shows up right here at the top of the buttons okay and then the second option this one is going to be the text that shows up on button one and then you got commas separating all these keep that in mind and then the next string would be the text that shows up on the second button so on and so forth so if you wanted five buttons you're going to have six strings in here all right because you'd have the instructions and then you'd have the strings for each of the five buttons. So that's how you tell MATLAB how many buttons you want in your menu. Okay, now here I've got these listed. So option one, like I said, that gives you the text that's showing up on the top button. If they hit that option, it's gonna return a value of one. All right, option two, if the user was to hit this button, a value of two gets returned. And then if they were to hit this button, a value of three gets returned. All right, so let's look at an example. So for this one, we're gonna, this problem is really straightforward and simple. We're gonna make it kind of complicated just to show you how this works. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna prompt the user to enter a number or a value for a variable X. And then we're going to give the user three trig function choices. All right, we're going to do this using menu. 
So their choices will be to take the sine of the value x, the cosine of x, or the tangent of x. All right, so they're basically putting in a number. So let's say they put in 0.5, and then you're asking them, do you want sine of 0.5, cosine of 0.5, or tangent of 0.5? Okay, and then the script's going to print whichever function of x the user chooses. And we're going to do this using the two different methods. So we'll use if else and then switch case. So let's see how it looks. So here it is with if else. All right, so. First of all, we tell them to enter their value right here. Okay, so they're going to enter their value x. And then after that, we're going to make the menu. Okay, so here's choice equals menu. You tell them to choose a function. Their choices are sine, cosine, tangent. All right, so they're going to pick one of those options. So now we start if statements. So if choice is equal to 1, that means they picked sign, right? Because choice is going to be equal to 1 if they hit the top button. Okay, sign is the top button. So that's what I'm saying. You got to keep in mind that you get a number, not sign. All right, so if they choose the top button, that means we want to do sign. So we're just going to do f print f, and then we'll say sign of, this will be x right here. So we'll just do percent point one f is, and then whatever sine of x is. So whatever your value is. And then let's put slash in to move that cursor to the next line. So the first value here is going to be x, and then the second value is just sine of x. Okay. So now if choice uh, was not equal to 1, that means they didn't pick sine. So we don't want to do this. We're going to go to the next one, see if there's a match there. All right, so if choice is equal to 2, that means they picked the cosine button. So we need to switch our f printf statement around so that everything changes over to cosine. So now it'll say cosine of whatever value of x is whatever cosine x is. Okay, so we've got x, cosine x here. And then next, if neither of these two cases were a match, so if these weren't true, then we're going to come down and do this one. So then it'll see if choice is equal to 3. Choice will be equal to 3 if they hit the third button. Okay, so if they hit the third button, they want tangent. So our f print f will reflect that. So it'll be tangent of whatever the value is, is tangent x. Okay, so notice we have x and then tangent x here. All right, so we got those three choices. And then we have this else statement. All right, so this else statement is going to be used for when the user accidentally closes out the menu because there's the little red x at the top right. So if they accidentally close out, the close out that window, there's not going to be um, an appropriate button selected, obviously. So here you would just display error, right? That way they know they need to redo it, okay? And then we'll hit end. So that's the solution with if else. Okay, so let's go and look at switch case. So here it is with switch case. I think this one looks a lot cleaner, but that's just my opinion. Uh, but usually with menu, I think it's easier to use switch case. So here, the first two lines are going to be the same. You're getting your input value. You're setting up your menu. And now we have to do our switch code right here. All right, so we have switch, and then the variable we want to test against is going to be choice, okay? Because we're either going to get option one, two, or three. So case one, this is the case we will have if we hit button one. Right, which is sign. So then if we hit that one, we're going to have the same f print f we had in the last code. All right, so it'll tell us sign of x is whatever sign of x is. If this is not a match, so if choice is not equal to 1, it's going to go to the next case statement, and it's going to check to see if choice is 2. So if it's 2, that means the user hit 
this button because cosine would give you a tube. So your f print f needs to reflect that. So notice we've switched it to cosine. And then finally, if neither of these were a match, it's going to go down here to case three. And it would be three if the tangent button was hit. Because that would be the third button from the top. So that would return a three. So if they hit three, they want tangent of x. So you need to show that in your f print f. And then otherwise, so otherwise means if none of these were a match, we're going to display error. And then you always have to have your end statement. All right. So that's how you use the menu with if, else, if, and then switch case. So now let's go to the other video with the actual examples that you're going to type out.